was, when I mentioned scared or concerned, it's probably, I was more coming from the angle of what you'd been through. Because um, I know for me, that would probably make me question mm. bring children into the world like that. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, I, I would worry about it happening to them. But I know that I would do everything within my power to make sure it didn't. And even if it still did, that would mean it was supposed to happen. What would you do if it did? Yeah, well, okay, like, I've thought about this and there's nothing I really can do, right? If it's out of my control, it's out of my control. All I would do is be like, find out who did it, go through the appropriate channels. Because look, if I kill that person, I can't be a dad for them. So that's, that's kind of... Oh, yeah that's kind of like my hands would be tied to an extent because i would want to make sure that like okay let's make sure this person doesn't get away with it put them where they're supposed to be you can pay to get hits put out on people in prison i'm not saying i would do that but it'd be very tempting um <laughs> if we're living in a country where you can get drugs we're only three phone calls away from getting a firearm yeah. don't ask me how i know that but i do <laughs> so some are free some are free, some are one. Free. yeah yeah <laughs> depends who you know <laughs> um are you are you religious or are you spiritual? Because you you talk about being spiritual a lot. Yeah, I guess like people have an idea of what spiritual means. I'll give you my definition of it. Go for it. Um, it's like I'm at a restaurant, like a buffet, right? Not not a crappy one, like just a nice one where you've got like lots of different trays in front of you, and you, it's like self service. So you have got Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism. Then you've got lots of these different sects. I just feel like I'm going up with the tray with a plate and I'm never full up and I'm just trying little bits of everything yeah. and I'm like, oh, that broccoli was nice from Islam. Let's take some of that. And yeah, I'm just constructing my own religion called selfism. I might write the book one day, I don't know. But um, that for me means that I'm constructing these beliefs that serve me for me and the betterment of anyone's life I come into. Yeah, I hear. That's dope. That's dope. Um... Run to your spine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, so okay, this is a long story. Uh, yeah. Okay, so basically, this toxic relationship situation I was in. The girl, her dad was a police officer, so I tried to break it off with her loads of times, like loads of times, and she just wasn't having it. She kept saying to me, "If you don't do what I tell you to, give me your apartment key." Don't come to your room when I tell you not to. Just everything, like you're under mind control. If you don't, then I'm going to tell my dad that you tried to do X, Y, Z, all this stuff. And I'm going to tell my brother and I'm going to tell all these people who live in this city because you don't live here and we're basically going to keep doing horrible things to you. Yeah. Unless, if you go along with what I say, nothing's going to happen to you. You'll be all right. Yeah. You smoke your weed, shut up, stay out of my wow. business. I'll stay out of yours. That's it. And um, so I just lived under mind control for a good like three, four years. Part of that was um, we went for a study abroad placement in Australia and uh, she was like, you're going to you're going to fund me. So you're going to get your parents to pay for me and you. You're going to pay for majority of these things. She did a little scam of her own, which I'm not going to talk about because they were not there yet. Um, but yeah, basically like that. I went to Australia under those pretenses. Right. And uh, while I was there, I just got sick of it. So I was like, look. For the last half of the year that we're there, I'm so I'm gonna do my own thing, man. I'm gonna go and date whoever I want. And I st I met this Korean girl. Oh my god. Okay, anyway, um, I met this nice Korean girl who was really into me, and yeah. it was really obvious. And I was yeah. like, wow, she jumped on me one day, which I had no like had never happened to me before. Yeah. And uh, I was like, wow, okay, so she's really into me. And uh, this girl, my ex at the time, um, she saw that that girl was texting me, and she said, I told you, you're not allowed to talk to other girls. And she said, what should I do to you now? So I was like, okay. Uh, so anyway, I go to this fitness first around the corner from me. And she's there talking to this dude who was obviously taking a lot of steroids. Yeah. And um, she kept trying to make me feel bad about how skinny I was. So yeah. uh, it kind of worked. So I started taking this mass gainer. And then he started training me without me knowing that they had been cooking up some sort of scheme behind my back. So she had, I think she told him that I was hitting her or something like that. And her thing was also like, she wanted me to pretend that we were together to everyone else in the world. But um, it was so that it would make it more fun when she would sleep with other groups of guys. Then they would come up to me and be like, yeah, we fucked your girlfriend or something like that. And I, I was, I was having, that's, 
Well, dude, I would come back to my apartment sometimes and there would be groups of people leaving, like all, only you guys. your apartment. Like, so she, we had to live together. I chose to live with her under the mind control thing while we were in Australia. Pretty much every day, you know, you know, almost nine months, okay, um, and mm. yeah, like I chose, like when I would come back to the room, there would be groups of guys leaving, and it would just be her in the room, and the bed would all be lumpy and stuff, and I'm like, what? I can't even sleep on this shit, man. And she put, she get people to jizz on my clothes and like on my laptop and stuff, and like she's like, yeah, clean it, I'd like just lots of weird sexual behaviors, and uh, but then when it was come to our friend circle. I would, she would see that you have to pretend to be together otherwise you know what's going to happen and uh, so I kept living like that and then the scheme that she cooked up with the steroid guy from the gym was they were going to um, she something to the effect of like they wanted to keep publicly humiliating me in front of people in the gym so it, they made it look like I was her boyfriend but then when she would do personal training sessions with him they would be like really in, intimate with each other and people would be like oh that's your girlfriend are you sure that's all right and I couldn't say anything about it at the time so I was just like yeah she's very friendly or whatever just making excuses and people would come up to me in the friend circle and be like yo she's cheating on you I'm like oh she's not like that don't worry but inside, I was like, oh, God, I hate myself. <laughs> but anyway, the thing with the steroid guy was like, um, yeah, I would say to him, you know, I don't think this is good for your health, man. Like, you only got 15, 20 years left because you keep doing this to your body. Your heart is going to atrophy. The left ventricle wall keeps getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And then your heart's going to give out one day. I don't want that for you. But he took it the other way, which is like, how dare you? Which, of course, who, who, who the fuck am I to say that to anyone? So whatever. I was like 20 years old at the time. And then her and this guy, they, he said to me one day when I finished training, he was like, see you later tonight. And I was like, okay, didn't know what that meant. So I was like, whatever. So anyways, I was sit, I was drinking uh, wine that day with a few people and she put some drugs in my drink. And then I woke up later on and they were having sex on the bed next to me um, while I was sleeping, which I, again, I'm used to that kind of stuff by that point. So I just turned over and went to sleep just like... I was so tired from the alcohol and whatever they'd put in my drink that I just couldn't be asked. And then they like, she was like leaning over me while she was on top of him saying like nasty things to me. And I was moved out of the way. I was like, get out of my face, man. Like, leave me alone. Let me sleep. And then it kept doing it. So, so what was the guy doing at this point? Like, he was banging her. But he wasn't, obviously, but he wasn't like saying, yo, this is crazy. He wasn't. They were in, he was really into like the humiliation aspect of it. So, like, he kept saying to me after gym sessions, I would have, oh, I fucked your girlfriend. And I would just laugh about it. Hey, she's not like that, man. I knew what was going on. He didn't know that I wasn't the real boyfriend thing because I wasn't allowed to talk about it. So he just kept saying, like, stuff like, oh, yeah, she gives really good head and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's good for you, man. I'm glad you're happy. And I would just keep it moving. I think that really annoyed people because they wanted a reaction. But I knew what the truth was, so I wouldn't give it to them. And uh, it just got worse. Like for him, I could see he was getting really angry about it, that I wasn't giving him the reaction. So, so go on, tell me about what, they, what was their skin. So yeah, then they realized that it wasn't getting to me. I don't know what they were trying to get out of it. And then um, they, like I, I fell back asleep and they wrapped me in the duvet while I was like, I, again, like with, when you're being drugged like that, it's like a haze that you, and you can't really move properly. And you can't, like, you're slurring your words. And when I, I got drugged in a bar one time, and after I'd only had one drink, and the guy, I go to the bartender, I've been drugged, can you call the ambulance? And he goes, you're slurring the words because you're drunk, you fucking pisshead or whatever. He goes, just shut up, let your girlfriend take you home. And I, and I was crying, but I was like, don't let her, whatever. So this thing, they wrapped me in the duvet, and then they were having sex on top of me. So, and like, with like a lot of impact to try and hurt my back. Because, um... So this is where it all comes from. Basically, like her dad had said something along the lines of like you're a dirty prostitute or something like that because she he had found out that she was going on this clubbing holiday and she had told me about it. And then she I had like we had a really bad argument and I said, you're that's the re this is the reason why your dad said that to you, because all you want to do is have sex with groups of strangers. And she didn't like it. that I would told her the truth. And she said, I'm going to make sure you never walk again because you said that to me. So this then comes back to me while I'm lying there. I'm like, oh, okay, this is why she's trying to do it. So then she was like, she would say, when she when they were doing it on top of me, she was like laughing at me and stuff like, you're a pussy, he's a real man. And I said, real men don't need to take steroids or something like that. So he got really annoyed and I kept making it worse. 
<laughs> I kept making everything worse by talking, right? So eventually they like I kept saying this is what your dad said to you you're and the other guy you're a pussy because you're doing this and that and they stopped they got off me and then they left the room for a while and then like for a day or so I was just like in this haze of like um being drugged like not knowing what time of day it was or anything and they'd put a blindfold on me as well so I didn't know what time of day it was and I was shouting for people who'd like this is crazy I know, right? No one believes me when I say it as well. Like, I've had... Oh, man, I've had so many conversations about this. Can't, that's, like, another reason why people who've had sexual abuse don't talk about it. Because the truth is stranger than friction. Oh, yeah. So, um, I'm in this room for, like, a good pff, 24 hours, maybe, just with my own head. And, like, in my head, I have this war going on of, like, this experience is going to change you. If you don't choose to change after this, I don't know what will. And then anyway, they came back in the room a couple hours later and the, he kept punching me, like they stood me up against the wall and he kept punching me in the stomach unless I would drink the alcohol that they were making me drink. And um, they got me drunk so that I would forget whatever it is they were about to do. And then when I was really out of it, they unwrapped the duvet that I was wrapped in and then um, they like laid me over the bed but so that my front was like hanging off so my back was bent. And then the guy who was taking the steroids put his hands on, you know, the vertebrae that stick out on your back. He moved uh, a few of them over from the middle to this side over here, oh um, like two or three of them. And, you know, yeah, it was, oh a, it was the worst pain I've felt. But oh. at the same time, like uh, it wasn't that bad as it sounds. But then uh, they both jumped up and down on my back with like four. He said to me, I weigh over 90 kg or something before he did it. And they jumped up and down to me and then they had sex on top of me a few more times uh, just with jumping impact to make sure that it was properly broken. So, did you your spine was actually broken? Uh, it, I guess like, well, this is another thing, right? So I was, I couldn't get out of the bed for a good 36, 72 hours. I can't remember how long it was. And I hadn't eaten anything in a while. And that was the only thing that got me to get out of the bed was like, I need to eat something. So when I got up, it was all right when I sat like that. But then I tried to get out of the bed and I just fell out. And she laughed at me and like loads, like really like was laughing at me. And then she started crying and it almost like she felt bad about it. And I was like, why, why? And I didn't remember it again. Like I didn't rem like I, uh, I did remember I was choosing not to, like my brain was doing that trauma thing. And then like, I also remembered that I was screaming for help when this stuff was happening. The police actually came to the room, but they had put me underneath the bed and these incompetent police officers didn't checked under the bed for me they had just people in the building must have been complaining that someone's screaming can you go and have a look what it is and they must have just thought these two kids are having wild sex or whatever and then i went downstairs and i couldn't like i couldn't turn my neck i couldn't like bend my back properly and she said to me if you go to the hospital to get this stuff checked out i'm gonna tell you know whatever and you're gonna go to prison in australia so that's the backstory. And you know what's even crazier is how it got fixed. I went to the gym in 2014. And this, this uh, I call him the ghetto PT. His name's Peter. Shout out Peter, by the way. Um, he goes, he was doing a back stretch with me. He goes, you got something on this side of you. What the hell is this? He goes, look, I'm not a doctor or anything, but this is not right. And he goes, do you want me to move it back for you? I go, I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, do it. He moved them back and I was in agony. And then I felt like that next couple of days, they all clicked naturally into place. And then the only thing that was a bit messed up was the back of my neck. But then the lower back one, yeah, that's, that's insane. And what's even in more insane than that is back then at that day, I remember, don't worry about your back. Peter will fix it. I didn't even know who Peter was at the time. So yeah this this is going into another thing i've had lots of channeling experiences of like when i see future me telling me why or what is going to happen and then it happens and everything that's happened in my life right now has been exactly right according to the prophecy that has been told to me i know how that sounds <laughs> no no i'm, 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 I'm not yeah it's weird for that for let's let me go back to the story first of all did you go to the reason about this no, nah, well, that's the thing. Like, at that time, I told a police officer what happened and he called me a pussy and he just told me to man up. Uh, that was in Australia. And I was like, oh, okay. And then he just laughed at, laughed at me and walked off. I was like, 
Oh, that's a bit peak. But that's, that's the thing. I just stopped talking about these things because people kept telling me I was a pussy. And I would cry a lot as well. So again, like people were just like, bro, you're a pussy. Like I never, I was not able to fight people like confrontational, like physical fight people unless I was absolutely 100% demonic out of my mind drunk. Mm. And even then it was hard for me. But any everyone who's always known me has known me as never to engage in physical confrontation, which comes back to the childhood stuff. So everyone just thought, hey, you're a bitch. Like this is supposed to happen to you to get you to man up, like do something. And that's what I just thought, oh, it's not for me. So I don't know what to do. 